Now, uh, let's get back to um, uh, why uh, my operating system lose access to files. So, so as you guys know, you have a drive or you have a computer, and your customer comes to you and say, OK, I need to get access to files. So what, what could be wrong? OK, so why uh, the, the, the computer uh, may not give you access to, uh, to files? <clears throat> the first thing is uh, it's a system software or hardware fails to detect the drive, right? It's, it's pretty straightforward. So, so when, when the hard drive is there in your, in your Mac or, or PC, uh, the system software, which we call either operating system or BIOS or any firmware, <clears throat> okay, cannot detect a drive. Uh, the crucial thing with this, uh, with this is that it could happen either due to drive level or disk level issues, okay? And that's something to, uh, to, to, to understand. So why is that <clears throat> when the, the system boots up, it actually, it, it sends a lot, a lot of commands to the drive, okay? So it's not like just identify device. There is a special command that is called identify device, ATA command, okay? Bias or operating system may send 10, 15, up to 20 different commands just to recognize a drive, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. If your BIOS, even like, even like your, you know, your laptop in the BIOS or in operating system doesn't see the drive, it doesn't necessarily mean that the drive doesn't respond. It doesn't necessarily mean the drive has failed, okay? Because you probably uh, know smart attributes, right? Smart subsystem, the, the subsystem on the drives that, you know, track, track, you know, status of the drive. Uh, so some system software may not even interact with the drive if the smart fails. Simply that. So I, I, the system software, right, I send a command and see the drive respond to me that there is a problem with the drive. And after that, it's really up to system, uh, system software designer what to do. And many system software will just drop connection to the drive, okay, in these circumstances. <clears throat> so that's why, as you can see, uh, if you don't have appropriate tools or appropriate ways of diagnosing the drive, you cannot really uh, say what, uh, what's wrong with the drive. It could be really simple, uh, like a few sectors, or oh, MBR get corrupted. You know, some system software, master boot record corrupted, it may drop connection to the drive. Okay? And uh, I want you to understand that uh, system software, it's not, it's not like, you know, like, a, like a weak part of system software. You should understand that system software is designed to handle only healthy drives, right? Because from the perspective of user of the computer, uh, it, it's a good thing not to work with a bad drive, right? So it is designed not to handle issues. And, and such, it should pot potentially just uh, respond uh, to the user or prompt the user, look, it's a bad drive, I'm not going to work with it. It's just there is usually no user interface on that level. Right? So, but system software really make a decision. Okay, I'm not going to work with this drive. I drop the connection, there is no drive. So, so the first thing you should understand that it doesn't mean it has a drive level issue. Okay, it could be just some kind of instability. <clears throat> so the next thing is when drive has substantial media damage or other instability. This is really classic disk level issues where the, there could be lots of bad sectors, there could be occasional clicking noises, there could be occasional spinning up. Maybe you've, you've seen drives that actually can just spin up uh, in a work on its own and then at some point just spin down. Okay, just because it decides, okay, there is a firmware exception, I cannot, you know, go on. And if you repower it, it may boot up and, and start giving you access to data again. So there could be lots and lots of different kind of instabilities. <clears throat> uh, and uh, when drive may has just occasional bad sectors, okay? So again, we're talking about a situation when OIS may not give you access to files. Uh, it could be either disk level or data level issues. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, why it could be data level issues, uh, the nature of bad sectors, and uh, in the industry we call it uh, soft bad sector and hard bad sector. So basically, soft bad sector uh, are those sectors that were creating by the drive during any kind of instability, like it could be power surge, okay? And during the writing process, okay, it written the sector improperly, and now, it, it, it's a bad sector, but it's, we call it soft bad sector. So it's actually software bad sector. 
It has nothing to do with, uh, with the media problem or with electronic instability or with mechanical problems, right? It is still software. So that's why, again, occasional bad sectors, occasional bad sectors, it could be, it could be data level issue. Okay, and they could be processed by by uh, by logical data recovery software. But uh, we will talk uh, about diagnostic a bit more later on, and I'll explain you, and you will understand how to distinguish between disk level and data level and drive level. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, and the last thing is. Basically, just healthy drive with logical file system corruption. It's, it's a classic uh, data level issues, right? So we'll not talk about it a lot. You, you guys know what, what it is. <clears throat> Another issue, uh, uh, why uh, drive may, operating system may, may lose access to files is uh, uh, the complexity of operating system. As you can see, this is just a, just a regular operating system. It doesn't. It, it, it could be Windows or OS X or Linux, whatever. They all have the same thing. As you can see, uh, they have API, application program interface level, where all application communicate to the operating system through OS API. And then there is a kernel where they have drivers, right? And uh, we have standard ATA controller or whatever a CSI controller, whatever controller you're using. And only then uh, we have hard drive or SSD. So uh, why I put this diagram? For you to understand, there is no direct access from any software to the hard drive. Okay? As you can see, if you run data recovery software, and uh, I, will not, I will not name, by the way, any data recovery software. It's, uh, they're, they're all very similar to each other, and you're familiar with it. I don't want to be also kind of you know, good to one vendor and bad to another one. But just if, when we're talking about logical recovery software, as you can see, this software can only communicate to the hard drive through all the layers of operating system. Okay, so from this perspective, uh, as you can see, for instance, uh, File Explorer uh, or Finder, has exactly the same level of access to the drive, exactly the same control of the drive. Okay, this is just for you to understand that don't expect any magic from data recovery software. Okay, if drive has media problem, disk level uh, problems, then whatever you run, whether it's a data recovery software or just a regular file explorer, it will go through the same chain of la of, of layers of operating system to get access to the drive. Okay, so if drive freezes, okay, the, the, the entire operating system may freeze. And, and, and data recovery software is not built for, for the purpose to handle these level issues. Okay, so that's just a diagram that should give you a clear idea uh, of the fact that data recovery software is only built, intended for the purpose of uh, working with healthy drive that has file system corruption. Okay. So if drive has disk level issues, drive level issues, don't expect any, any magic from data recovery software. 